Hey, what's up guys? How you doing? Today we're going to do uh, another request video. Um, from the last video, uh, Dave's Defense, we had a request from Hassan Enrique Asmuden. Okay? He's a karateka from Norway. So, I wish my boys in Norway over there. <laughs> okay, he, his question was, uh, what is sticking? Can I please explain sticking? And I'm going to do my best. <laughs> this is uh, an interesting concept. So, what people consider sticking is really following, right? But not following, it's, it's more of a cut into to be wet. So, if I was to have a, a hot knife and a, and a plate of butter, and I let the knife drop on the butter, it's going to cut it, right? Now, if I start moving the plate around, the knife's going to follow it. You see? As long as I let go of the handle. So if I knife's in the butter, and I have the handle, and I'm tight, and you move the butter, so you to, but if I just take my fingers and you move the butter, it's going to want to be dragged my hand around, right? So that's basically the idea. Um, when you connect, you're trying to attach by, 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 the, by the compression, right? So it's, so I also spoke about in the walking video that our body deals with space and time through compression variation. You gotta think of it like Helen Keller. Your body is basically Helen Keller trying to figure out its way in the world. So it does it through pressure mediation, like how you know, like comparing pressures throughout the system and doing some kind of crazy math equation to keep you in balance, okay? And this is going to be important later because that's why people will stick to you is because of the way that their brain is trying to coordinate their t in time space in the x, y, z coordinates, okay? <coughs> so, let's try to figure out how to explain this. I hope, I'm, I hope this is making sense because these are very delicate topics, you know, especially because when you come into the Tai Chi community, everybody has like their way and then, you know, it's all fragmented. And they tend to not realize that these internal skills are hidden in all the external styles. You see it all the time. Sticking, you see them, all the good in fighters in boxing, they all have stick follow, you know, stick it here, joint follow. Mike Tyson, uh, Mayweather, <laughs> like, um, it was like, it was like crazy guys, Augusta something, and uh, you know, like, like any one of those guys that are, are doing shoulder rolls in tight, you're gonna see stick it here and join follow. The problem in Chinese martial arts, for the most part, and you know, some of the, some of the Filipino people that are starting to like treat the Filipino arts like Chinese, um, and some of the commercial rest of the stuff, and basically everybody, <laughs> they take a drill, Wing Chun is freaking notorious for this. They take a drill that's supposed to sim simulate three beats of a fight <laughs> and they draw it out for hours and hours and hours. The amount of time that you're gonna stick in a real fight is three seconds is a long time because the idea is entry, follow, finish. You know, he comes in, I make bridge, I connect to him, and I go in, I tear his head off. That sticking is to allow you to cross over to go finish. You're not supposed to be sitting there in this trapping, grappling. No, if you're on a battlefield with swords and knives and horses, I don't got time to be playing jujitsu on the ground and, you know, tai chi, push hand. What are you talking about? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, we don't got time for that. So the, you know, the way that they're looking at it is messed up, so they don't see it anymore. They don't see stick it here, join follow in external styles. They don't see it in kind of thing, right? Because it, it, it's in their head, oh, no. And then the karate people are like, oh, that's bullshit. And everyone's not seeing the, the connecting dots. <laughs> so for instance, uh, you do the karate, right? So if we do a knife hand block, right? If I do this knife hand block, when I hit this guy or he gets impacted, the mistake in modern people's minds that a, uh, the block, even though you see the cut and, look, and, and then they leave it, they don't get how this works in reality. When I throw this block in reality, it may be decoupled. I mean, not being the perfect whatever. I mean, just have the arm here, whatever it is. Let's just say he throws a punch and I, I get the wrist or I get the elbow joint and my hand's here and his arm is hanging over, right? Most people that are training, I've seen a lot of the crappy schools, they'll hit it and bring it back. Blocks or shielding is always static and pushing and following. 
So when he hits me, I want to catch it and step in to that. I'm following him through. So that's one level of sticking, he's just chasing, right? So in that method of chasing sticking, where I like follow him in my whole frame, I'm chasing him to stay connected. So the next way is following sticking, where I decouple or I allow him to lead me. So I do the knife hand, right? And then I decouple my shoulder joint and I'll start to chase that limb or allow me to follow that limb separately while the rest of my body is free, okay? So that's another way of sticking. But the point of sticking is not sticking. The point of sticking is what, what happens. It either allows you to follow the opponent, to be led by the opponent, or to inject some form of kinetic force to disable his structure. That's the whole point of it. So I think if you understand the point, the, the method becomes apparent, okay? So he throws a round last kick, and I do inside or outside form block, right? I, I hit it, I want to stay connected and chase it down, right? You know what I mean? I'm not going to do this and run away. No, I want to chase it down and run into him. <laughs> okay, so it's a form of sticking. But it should be considered following or being led. And the way you can train this with a partner is you put your hand out like this and have the partner put just like two fingers on top of your hand. I mean like just like you barely can feel it. So just your hair is moving. And then what he's going to do is he's going to move his hand around and you have to follow that pressure and keep that pressure constant. Okay, so the feeder should be moving slow enough that when he drops down you have time to respond to the down pressure and the up pressure. Okay? But you, I mean like you want to really barely feel this. And that's a good uh, little drill to do with your friends. Okay? If you don't have any friends, <laughs> you can try drills where you're practicing following and wrapping over the same hand, okay? Doing opposite rolls, or just practice wrapping one arm, practice wrapping the other arm, keeping the same consistent pressure, okay? You can do this same thing on the edge of the wall, like so. Here's my contact point. I'm gonna practice rolling and switching uh, trading contact is another way. And you can do this in any variation depending on what your style is doing. What I'm trying to do is keep the lightest pressure possible, keep the same pressure, and then trade off. And learn to trade. It's another little exercise you can do. Um, but I think uh, what people are really looking for is the, you know, the fancy internal style sticking, like, you know, how does that work? And like I showed up in my Google video, which is a place that looks fake, and it's, it looks like nonsense, I know. Uh, so Shaolin Mike is a local, he used to go to the Shaolin Temple School there, and he was like training with them for a couple of years, and you know, he was a nice neighborhood guy, you know? He, he, you know, just like one of the locals. And that was one of the parks where they always have, like everybody goes to Columbus Park to go and practice martial arts and mess around, and you know, hang out, it's, 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 a, it's a thing, it's like, you know, any day of the week there's always somebody there doing something, yeah? Um, but you know, none of that is a stage thing, it's just, you know, he wanted to, you know, play before I left, that was my last day in New York City, and you know, I think I gave him one more, one more little round. <laughs> so he, he wanted to go one arm, because that's how they were practicing him and his friends, so there you go, one arm. So what you'll see there is, he starts jumping around and doing all this weird stuff, right? His body feels all locked up and I'm able to control him from just the contact of my forearm. It doesn't matter where, okay? I can control him from the top and the bottom. Okay, so it doesn't, make a, it doesn't really make a difference. So you see, how the hell <laughs> does that work? Okay, so it's not enough to just follow the limb, okay? I, I always talk about, I wanna chase his center and chase his spot. I wanna attack his being, his, his, his beingness. So, um, I don't know which videos you guys are caught up to, but like I say, that there's a void in the guy's heart that draws me in, okay? It's like I, I'm feeling like I'm magnetically sucked in. Like I'm an electrical impulse that's being sucked into a magnetic vacuum. <laughs> that's, that's the only way I can explain it. So everything I do, for instance, if you're doing katare, uh, let's say, I'm trying to think of a form, we have the same simple form, like, oh, this basai, Right? You don't talk about this. Uh, I haven't done that in 10 years. But um, 
even something like this, you know, you're going to have moments where you go, oh, how can I be sticking? How can I be joining and following? You know, if you're doing your forms correctly, right, um, I don't know, we'll do like a yellow belt thing if I can remember any of them. I haven't done that style in so many years, okay. So just say I'm doing like a sumimaki and then the form stands and you know, you know the whole thing. I don't want to ruin that song. But your focus should be on going through the target into his spine and ripping his spine or breaking it in half. That intent is why people who transfer from traditional karate going into tai chi do way better than people who don't. And all these people that say, oh, the hard style is bad, the hard style is this. Every single Tai Chi master guru guy that's worth his weight in shit right now, every one of them has a hard style background. Everyone. And the few that maybe don't, they practice hard style in their yang style. They do the long pole, they do freaking swords, and they, you know, it's, so, <laughs> yeah, the delusion's gonna, it's no good, guys, no good. <laughs> I probably should put my geek glasses on so I can uh, do more professorial. Okay, a little, a little. It makes me, it makes me you know, smell smarter. <laughs> so where were we? Sorry about that. So yeah, I mean, the, you know, in my opinion, the karate guys, me being one, we have an advantage because we we have a different type of body awareness. You know? and spatial awareness and also understanding of force. The problem is, is the speeds that we deal with don't allow us to manage the force consistently because all we care about is impulse force, right? The difference between the Tai Chi and the Karate is that in the end of the day, they're both the same. The way that my master said to me was this, you know, our style is a hard soft style, Tai Chi is a soft hard style. At the end of the day, when you finish the program, the entire syllabus, you wind up in the same place. You should, so if you start to do like, a, I don't know, there's a lot of moves in the type of, you know, what we do is Korean karate now, you know, but you'll see like these moves are the same in the Tai Chi form. You know, we have all these, these like kind of moves like, you know what I mean, like you have, you have the soft elements that start to be added in later and later. Why? Because the war art, and we don't have time for that shit. I need people on the field within freaking 17, 18 days sometimes. You know what I mean? Like, you know, but for the most part, you have to be, say, let's say you have three months or six months, you know, to train a battalion. You don't, you don't have time to be teaching them like 20 years of war, you know? So it, it has to go the other way. Anyway, um, so we're talking about how do we get the force to mess with this guy through sticking, right? I guess I'm trying to figure out what's the most important things for you guys. So for the karate guy, you should practice your sticking energy and sparring as soon as you, anytime you block, anytime you block anything, you should be sticking. Anytime you get side position or side angle of a person, you have body touch, you, you stay stuck, right? So you know, he throws, you know, front kick, crunch, whatever, and I get that, that you know, female step, and I'm next to him on his shoulder, I'm gonna be on top of him. <laughs> I'm gonna be hip to hip, shoulder to shoulder. You know what I mean? So you, you gotta think how can I use this squeezing, following, and leading energy all the time. Uh, and it's in the form. It's in, all the, it's in the form. The people, is, they forget that a lot of these moves, like these wrapping moves and all this kind of stuff, this, it's the same idea. There's coiling, there's sticking, there's brushing. There's, it's comes from the same place. Um, okay, so I want to make sure. I think we. I'm trying to figure out what you guys can't get from other people. <laughs> okay, I don't want to be giving you exactly the same thing that you can find on 50 other channel. It's you know that's why I don't teach you know karate and boxing and other things because there's a hundred thousand people doing that. So it's difficult for me to you know, give you something that's valuable that's still you know, something that you just can't find <laughs> on the garbage dumpster fly we call YouTube. Oh, God. Okay. So how is it that the guy starts bouncing around? Okay. So I can stick to opponent externally, or I can stick to him internally and stick to his intent. So we've gone on this several times about the chi or the G 
The force is an actual kinetic wave that is separate from your structure. It may be produced, your, your body's momentum, inertia, mass is accelerating, may produce this force within your body and propel it, but it is not your part of your body system. So you can feel it separate. It's the same as if I put my hand in a bucket of water or a pool and do a palm strike, you see the trail. You know, it's not part of my hand. However, you can feel that wave the same on the outside, inside your body. And this is an important thing, I'm going to say this again. What everyone is missing about Tai Chi that they don't understand is that this projected force wave that comes out of your hand in you know, the swimming pool toilet bowl, you can feel that inside your body. You have to learn, that's what sensitivity is, to learn to feel the wave that's coming out before it leaves your body. Because that is a separate, tangible, physical occurrence in nature that is not part of your anatomy. It's being resonated and, and you know, built up around or within your anatomy, but it's not part of your anatomy. So you must learn to feel the wave, <laughs> okay? So the karate that I do was from one Kung Fu teacher, you know, I learned the very first, the original way it was taught. Okay, so the school of the blue wave, <laughs> okay? The blue wave school. So the idea is, you know, you must be able to feel that wave power. You need to be able to feel the wave. The, that karate reverse punch is the same punch in Chen style. It's the same punch in Yang style, okay? It's wave power. I need to be able to feel that wave and project it. Fine. So you know I said we have an advantage from karate because that's what we do. The problem is when it's that fast of an impulse, you don't have time to recognize that that wave is separate and can be whooped, <laughs> hung out with, and, and played with, and molded. Okay? So this is the first understanding. So now when I'm going about cutting in and injecting force, when I touch the person, when I teach it, I teach it that each hinge with the synovial joint, the rotation or the synovial fluid is an entry point to inject energy. So I want to connect, I teach students, track and find the hinge. This is level, baby level, okay? Once I find the hinge, now I want them to connect with that butter sticking energy. And it's not sticking energy, it's an attaching because I cut in. Now I'm not sticking to him, I cut in physically, energetically, and he's wrapped on me. Right, like butter would seep around the knife. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll decouple, and so I can follow him without affecting my axial skeleton. However, I'm still maintaining the integrity of the what do you call it? And the anatomy training called tensegrity. I think it is when you you know the, the the fascial system is basically stretched out, which is basically you know caused by all your tendons and everything in Spain. Okay, fine. So I have that telephone game, but I'm decoupled. So I still have bridge, but he can't connect his energy to my center because if he tries to put energy in, it's going to be spun around and put back to him. Okay. So now that I have this connected force, I can inject my force, my wave, through those lines of tension in his bone marrow. Okay. And you can do both. Okay. So a lot of people. They're not technically wrong when they talk about the fascia. Technically, in, in a way, but you know, there's some things that you can't control the fascia consciously. You know, it's an indirect thing that happens. Okay, we only have control over our phasic muscles. Okay, phasic meaning on off. I can, you know, my bicep does you know flexion and radial supination. <laughs> okay, like, it goes on off. That's what I have control consciously on. The fascia will, f will wrap and stretch and bend around because its job is to hold things together. And it nutrient that is a whole bunch of stuff. I'm talking about baby level here, okay guys? It's job to hold things together. Anyway, we're putting that wave in the swimming pool into their system through the injection point. Okay? Now, as you get higher in level, it doesn't matter where you connect to them. Because now I can bridge from my contact point into the next joint. So my way of looking at it is I want to ride whatever I'm on, insert energy through the synovial joint into the bone marrow, and then from the bone marrow connect into the spine and attack whatever point I'm going for. Okay? So it, it, it's it generalized how I look at it. So 
Sudamaki, I, I block, he's here, I track down to his wrist, and now I'm injecting force that way. And if you notice, I, I talk about this many times, when I do a block, I'm not blocking that way. I'm blocking that way. Okay? Even though my technique is doing this, my energy is doing this. Okay? He's running into this shield, and yes, he get, there's, a, there's a energy that way from the rotation, but my intent is to seek forward, because as soon as I hit him, where he hits me, what do I want to do? See what I'm saying? I'm going to go right, and people understand the Kant is taught in these long movements, but when you fight with it, you, have to, you don't have to do that. <laughs> okay, you fight from where you are. So a move like this turns into this. Okay, so this is this. Okay. So it's it, the way people look at these things; they don't get it. <laughs> okay. Yes, I could go bang in real life, but I don't have to. <laughs> okay. It, it could work the same way here. It's a memory shape we expand to. You took the time. Okay. So, uh, what was that? So now I have this force that's going into his body. I also do it the other way around. So when I have that connection point, it's like a telephone game. He's putting energy towards me, I can read him. Because the same way I can inject force into him, I can now accept force into me to listen and hear what his position is. And it's a little game, right? Anytime you make contact with anything, it's not just one contact, it's going bing, 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 until one of them gives up. So if I throw a ball on the floor, it's not just a whoop, it's actually microscopic, okay? Until one of them gives up, it's a ripple, all right? So in those ripples is where the, the sensitivity hearing skill is. So now the reason why the people start jumping and doing all this weird stuff, <laughs> Basically what happens is they can't hear the ground, okay? Their, their listening skill gets turned down. So the person's way of dealing with space and time is depression variation. Remember how I, I said that? Well, I should show this to you again. This is very important. I, I explained to you guys in the walking video that the reason the Asian squat is bad for Westerners is because in their brain, they're connected to their heel when they walk. So their balance is at their heel, so when they go to sit down, their toes are going to roll, they're going to fall. So in that same idea, if they don't feel their feet in the ground, okay? Let's just say, in, in, pardon, let's just say you want to practice throwing a, a you know, kick or staying on the line, right? Okay, I got to put this, this one out of balance here, okay? So let me see so you get an idea. Okay, so if I stand here on one leg, okay, I can do force myself out of balance. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to force myself to be out of balance here. Okay, so I start to wiggle, right? Watch this. So as soon as I touch something, once I have that circuit, my body's like, we're good. Okay? One pinky, doesn't matter what I do. Once I have the complete circuit, I'm only touching my pinky. I'm not using a lot of energy. My proprioception, the cancer, no, like, okay, we know where we are. We can calm down. And you don't have that shaky effect. This is what we're doing to their body's consciousness. Because there's remember the separate memory of movement. So in the movement system, the gate management, what we're doing is we're screwing up the calculations. <laughs> okay? They don't know where they are in space, so they can't understand why they're stuck to you. <laughs> okay? So you, you took them out of their structure. And now they're sitting here with their wrist on, on your under, and like, why am I stuck? <laughs> why can't, because they're literally in a balance lock where they're, they're attached to you for balance. They have nowhere else to go. So if they were to break off of that, they're going to just drop to the ground. <laughs> okay? But that comes from really good uh, following skill. Um, I hope this is making sense, because I know I just jumbled all over the place. But it's a very difficult concept for me to express to you guys when I don't know who exactly is going to hear it. And there's just so much information is available, so I'm going to give it to you in a way that's different but still valuable, okay? Uh, I think that's pretty good.
Let me know if there's a detail that I missed. I'll do a follow up, you know, because it's an interesting uh, topic. Uh, that's basically it, guys. <laughs> so join the Discord, spread the word, and you know, for everybody out there, listen to my Karate Cop friends. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Peace out.